Yes. So, 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 all that I'm saying is that the um all, all that I'm saying is that the lipoproteins are mediums or are, um how do you call it? They serve as a media through which lipids are transported in the body. Okay, because lipids are water insoluble. So now, now I'm, I'm going to give you guys this story, okay? This story is going to summarize everything, okay? And when you are done with the story, you realize that the rest of the slide will, be, will go very fast. So now, the, the story is this. Now, imagine that someone eats um, food, okay? When the, when the person eats, the food con contains carbohydrates, proteins and lipids okay as well as other vitamins so so what's going to happen is that we are not talking about carbohydrates we're not talking about protein but what happens to the lipids now the diet the person eats okay the diet has several lipids the diet may contain um vitamin d it may contain cholesterol it may contain cholesterol ester and then try to triglyceride okay Triacylglyceride is the, which is TAG. Triacylglyceride is the is the most abundant dietary lipid. Okay, triacylglyceride is the most abundant dietary or exogenous lipid. If I use dietary lipid, it's the same as exogenous lipid. Okay, so then we know that when when it gets into the 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 intestine, okay, the small intestine, it must be absorbed into the enterocytes. Then after it has been absorbed into the enterocytes, okay, it will be taken into the lymphatic system. Now, the, the absorption of lipids go, goes first into the lymphatic system, okay. Then later on from the lymphatic system, it will join the bloodstream, okay. So now the question is, how do we get triacylglyceride to enter into the the enterocytes. The enterocytes are the cells of the intestine, the small intestines. Okay, so the triacylglyceride is so big that it cannot enter the enterocyte. So what, what must happen is that you have to break down the triacylglyceride into smaller pieces, okay? Into its 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 constituents. So then we use we use the, the pancreatic uh, lipase. So what that lipase is going to do is that it's going to break down the triacylglyceride into fatty acids and glycerol. It's also going to break down cholesterol ester into cholesterol and then the fatty acid. Okay, so that's the function of the pancreatic lipase. And we know that um, bile must be present to, to emulsify the fat so that the pancreatic lipase can work, okay? After the pancreatic lipase has worked, okay, now the, the the fatty acids can pass through the cell membrane into the enterocytes. Glycerol too can also enter the enterocytes. Okay, cholesterol too can enter the enterocytes. Now, when all these enter the enterocytes, what's going to happen is that now the body is going to, with the help of the lipoproteins, okay, capture all these these um, absorbed. Uh, lipids okay so within the enterocytes are lipoproteins okay when when the lipoproteins um how do you call it so the 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 the, the lipoproteins okay we 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 call them apple lipoproteins okay we have the apple lipoprotein the apple lipoproteins are the are the proteins themselves okay now, when you add the lipids to them, then you get lipoproteins. So lipoproteins is equal to apple lipoproteins apple, plus apple, lipids. Apple. Okay, so lipoproteins, when, when you talk about the apple lipoproteins, that is when you've not added the lipids, okay? But when you add the lipids, then we get what is called the, the lipoproteins. Without the lipids, they are called apple lipoproteins. Okay, so the apple lipoproteins within the enterocytes 
is what is called the B48. So it's a type of protein called the B48. Okay. Now, if I have this B48, then I add the the, the lipids to it. Okay. So so the, the lipids will recombine to form the triacylglyceride. Okay. So they, they, they will form the triacylglyceride again, and then cholesterol esters again. Okay. So so, so initially, when you eat, you eat triacylglyceride, but because it cannot enter the enterocyte, it was broken down into fatty acid and glycerol. When they enter the cell, they will recombine again to, to get your triacylglyceride, and then they will, they will join the proteins and form the lipoproteins, okay? As I said, the apple lipoprotein, which is required in the enterocytes, is called B48. So with, when you put the B48 and then the dietary lipids together, what you get, the lipoprotein you get is what is called the chylomicron. So the chylomicron is for absorption of dietary lipids. So it's for absorption of exogenous or dietary lipids. This, this is the most important point you should understand. That if someone's chylomicron levels are high, it means that the person is eating a lot of lipids because chylomicrons are from dietary lipids. Okay, good. And then remember that we need apple B48, B48. So when you hear B48, it's for chylomicron. Good, so now after, so when we take a chylomicron, it consists of B48, it consists of um, triacylglyceride, it also consists of cholesterol ester. Okay, and it consists of other things like vitamin D and other stuff. Okay, so after manufacturing this chylomicron, the new chylomicron we get is what is called the nascent chylomicron. That's the new chylomicron, nascent chylomicron. Now, this nascent chylomicron will pass through the lymphatic channels and join the blood. Now, when, when it enters the blood, okay, what's going to happen is that. There is another there is another lipoprotein moving about in the blood. Okay, that one is called HDL, which is a very good cholesterol. HDL. What what the HDL is going to do? Okay, is that the HDL is going to donate is going to make some donations to the nascent chylomicron. Now the donation is going to make is that is going to give the nascent chylomicron some other proteins okay the proteins are apo c2 and apo e when the chylomicron receives the apo c2 and the apo e the name of the chylomicron becomes matured chylomicron so matured chylomicron is when the chylomicron the nascent chylomicron receives apo c2 and apo e now, later on, I'll, I'll explain to you why it's important for chylomicron to receive apo C2 and apo E. Okay, now, what is the main function of chylomicron? The main function of chylomicron is to transport dietary triacylglycerol from the intestines to the tissue. Now, that's, that's, that is a very important statement. From the intestines to the tissue. So the tissues need triacylglycerol, okay, either for energy or for storage. So the function of the of the chylomicron is to transport dietary dietary triacylglyceride from the intestine into the into the to the tissues, okay. But when it gets to the tissues, okay, when it gets to the tissue, the tissues must be able to remove the triacylglyceride, okay? They do so by breaking down the triacylglyceride. And the enzyme that does that at the tissue level, okay, is called the lipoprotein lipase, which is LPL, lipoprotein lipase. So lipoprotein lipase means it's a lipase which breaks down lipoproteins, okay? So lipoprotein lipase. So lipoprotein lipase is responsible for breaking down the triacylglyceride from the chylomicron so that the 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 triacylglyceride okay 
can be absorbed by the tissues. Now, this enzyme, which is called the lipoprotein lipase, if it does not recognize a C2 from the chylomicron, it will never work. Okay, it will never work. So that's the reason why it must work. That's the reason why HDL must give a C2 to the nascent chylomicron because unless it receives, unless it um, receives the aposite two, the lipoprotein lipase at the tissue level cannot break down the triacylglyceride from the chylomicron. Okay, so after triacylglyceride, after the triacylglyceride have been broken down by the lipoprotein lipase, okay, what is left, okay, you you will now be left with a, a smaller chylomicron because most of the triacylglyceride have been removed, okay? That chylomicron that you get is what is called the remnant chylomicron or the chylomicron which is remaining, the remnant chylomicron, okay? Now, this remnant chylomicron will now be sent to the liver and the liver will absorb it. But before the liver absorbs it, the liver must recognize the ApoE. So that's the reason why HDL also had to give the chylomicron the ApoE or else it wouldn't have been absorbed by the liver. So this is the life cycle of chylomicron. Let me go over it again. One, when you eat for when you eat lipids, okay, the lipids must must be able to enter the enterocytes. They do so by because the triacylglyceride and the other lipids are huge, they cannot enter the enterocyte straight. So they must be broken down by lipids into their um, constituent, okay, into glycerol and then fatty acid. Then the glycerol and the fatty acid will enter the enterocytes. When they enter the enterocyte, they will all recombine again to get your triacylglycerol and your cholesterol esters, okay? Then, then after, after they recombine, Okay, we add them to a certain protein called ApoB48. Okay, so when you put the ApoB48 and then the lipids that you eat, the dietary lipids or the exogenous lipids together, you will get what is called we get we, we get what, what is called chylomicron. Okay, chylomicron. So chylomicron is B48 plus the dietary lipids. Okay. This chylomicron you get is called the nascent chylomicron. It will be taken through the lymphatic channel and then it will enter the bloodstream, okay, at the thoracic duct. It will enter the, the, the bloodstream. When it enters the bloodstream, it will receive apo C2 and apo. Um, it will receive apo C2 and then um, apo E from HDL. After it receives this, we call it a, a, a matured chylomicron, okay? Then the matured chylomicron is um, taken to the tissue, okay? When it gets to the tissue, the lipoprotein lipase is activated by C 2 okay? When it's activated by C 2 the lipoprotein lipase will chop off some of the triacylglyceride, okay? After it chops it off, you will be left with a small chylomicron, which is called the remnant chylomicron, which will be, will be absorbed by the, the liver, okay? But it must be recognized by ApoE. So this, this is the life cycle of chylomicron. Now, let me just bring in some, some other facts. Now, th there's a certain term that you, you'll be hearing, like densities, okay? We know density is equal to mass over volume, okay? Now, for the chylomicron, the, the the bulk of it is lipids, okay? Know that lipid gives it a lot of volume, but lipid doesn't add waste to it because lipid is, is, is not heavy. So the nascent chylomicron, which is rich in triacylglycerol and has larger volume, has lower density, okay? Now, what is giving these lipoproteins density is the proteins. So... So when you take something like the remnant chylomicron, which has had some of the triacylglyceroid chopped off, remnant chylomicron will be heavier than 
nascent chylomicron because nascent chylomicron just have a lot of triacylglycerides and has a larger volume. Okay, mass over volume is density. So if if you have a larger volume, okay, then your density we, we say your density is is low. So these lipoproteins are arranged according to their densities. Okay, the first one we've seen is the the first one we've seen is the chylomicron, okay, which is the least dense, okay, it's, it's the least dense, and it's responsible for transport of dietary or exogenous triacylglycerol. I'm emphasizing this. Good. Now, we are going to take the next chylomicron, uh, sorry, the next lipoprotein, which is, which is um, VLDL, which is very low, very low density lipoprotein, VLDL. Now, when we take the VLDL, when, when we take the VLDL, the VLDL is produced in the liver, and that one transports endogenous triacylglycerol. So that brings the difference between chylomicron and VLDL. Okay, VLDL transports endogenous or synthesized triacylglycerol, whilst chylomicron transports exogenous or dietary lipids, triacylglyceride. The second difference is that VLDL is produced in the liver, chylomicron is produced in the enterocytes. The third difference is that VLDL has ApoB100, whilst chylomicron has ApoB48. Okay, ApoB48 is in chylomicron, ApoB100 is in VLDL. Okay, and then the, okay, so, these, these are basically the function or the differences between VLDL and then chylomicron. Okay, the main function of VLDL is to transport synthesized or endogenous triacylglyceride from the liver to the tissues. That's, th that, that's the main function of VLDL, okay? The life cycle of VLDL is the same as the chylomicron, so I'll, I'll not go over it, okay? The VLDL will also receive ApoC2 and ApoE from, from HDL. Then it will also be broken down by the lipoprotein lipase, which is activated by ApoC2. Okay? Then uh, after the lipoprotein lipase has broken down the triacylglyceride from the VLDL, the, what is remaining is called IDL, which is intermediate density lipoprotein. Unlike the chylomicron, which is called the remnant chylomicron, for VLDL, we call it intermediate density lipoproteins, which is IDL. Okay, now with this IDL, okay, the, I, the IDL will have a E. So the IDL can be taken to the liver and then can be absorbed. Or the IDL can lose the apo E and be converted to. LDL, LDL. So when the IDL loses the ApoE, we get the LDL because the only thing that the LDL has is the ApoB100. The LDL does, does not have, the LDL does not have ApoC2 or ApoE. So if I have the, if I have the, the intermediate density lipoprotein and I remove the ApoE from it, I'll get LDL. So there are two pathways for the intermediate density lipoprotein. Either it is taken to the liver for the liver to absorb it, or either it loses the ApoE to form LDL. So we are done with VLDL. Now let's go to LDL. Now LDL can be produced from the intermediate density lipoprotein, as I have described, or LDL can be synthesized de novo from the liver. Okay, now the main function of LDL is to transport synthesized or endogenous cholesterol from the liver to the tissue. Now, look at the difference between VLDL and LDL. VLDL is to transport endogenous triacylglyceride, whereas LDL is to transport endogenous cholesterol. They are different. So if, a, if a, a, a patient's serum has high levels of 
has high levels of VLDL. That means that the person has high levels of triacylglyceride. If the if, if the patient has high levels of um, how do you call it high high levels of LDL, then the, the person has high levels of cholesterol. The two are not the same. Cholesterol is not triacylglyceride. Okay, so LDL is a, is a marker for cholesterol, whereas VLDL is a marker for um, how do you call it? It's, it's a marker for um, tri triacylglyceride. Okay, good. Now, now af after the after the LDL is, is uh, LDL is produced from the how do you call it from the liver? Okay. Mm -hmm. af after the LDL is, is produced from the liver, it is taken to the tissue. Okay, and as I said, LDL does not have any other. It, it does not receive apo C two or apo E from the HDL. Okay, and when it gets to the tissues. The tissues have what is called the LDL receptor, okay? And the LDL receptor will now, through the process of pinocytosis would, or endocytosis, will absorb the LDL, okay? When it absorbs the LDL, the LDL will, will break down and the cholesterol will be used by, by the cell to produce its hormones, okay? So that's how, how LDL is transported, okay? The last one that I'll talk about is is HDL. HDL. HDL is, is also called a good cholesterol. LDL is also called a bad cholesterol. Okay. The reason why LDL is a bad cholesterol is, is because it transports cholesterol from, from the liver to the tissue. Okay. And when it gets to the tissues, the capillary, the capillary or the, the arteries or arterioles of the tissue, the cholesterol can get deposited over there. And then we, we can get um, um, atherosclerosis, okay? So that's why if you have high levels of LDL, it shows that your body is taking more cholesterol to the tissue and you are more likely to get atherosclerosis, okay? But the function of HDL, I've already given you one, one function of HDL. That is, it's trans, it's, um, how do you call it? It um, um, donates other apple lipoproteins to the other lipoproteins, okay? So it gives C2 and then, it gives C2 and then E to the, um, how do you call it? To the chylomicron or the VLDL. Okay, so, that, so that's one function of HDL. The second function, okay? The, the second function of, uh, of HDL is that it's transport cholesterol from the tissues to the liver. So you see, it has a reverse function of the LDL. So if you have high levels of HDL, then that means that your body effectively mops up excess cholesterol from the tissues. So you are not at risk of getting at least um, sclerosis, okay? Good. And then one last thing. So le let me just mention this, that for the, for the HDL to perform this function, Okay, for the for the for the HDL to, to perform this function, um, it, it, it must have a mechanism of removing the cholesterol. Okay, so it it's, it can remove the cholesterol from the tissue, but but after it's uh, how do you call it? It it receives this cholesterol. Okay, remember that cho cholesterol sticks out of the cell membrane. If you remember the, the structure of the cell membrane. Cholesterol sticks out. Okay, in the same way, when you take HDL, okay, the cholesterol that it's it's received from the tissue, it will be sticking out. So if the HDL does not do anything to this cholesterol, as the HDL is moving through the body, the cholesterol that it has um, um, received from the tissues will just be giving back to the tissues again. Okay, so the cholesterol, the H, HDL does something very smart. Okay. After it receives the cholesterol from the tissue, what it does is that it converts that cholesterol to, to um, cholesterol ester. Okay. And we know that cholesterol ester is, is, is not soluble. So that one moves deeper into the HDL. Okay. So that it doesn't stick out. Okay. So how does it convert cholesterol to cholesterol ester? 
what it does is that it removes one fatty acid from from lecithin okay and it adds it to cholesterol because we said cholesterol ester is equal to cholesterol plus fatty acid so it's going to remove this fatty acid from lecithin so the enzyme there is what is called the l cats which is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase okay you see it in your slide the the function of this enzyme is just to convert the cholesterol to cholesterol ester so that the cholesterol ester will move deeper into the hdl so that it doesn't stick outside for it to be lost to the tissues good so with this with this with this i have summarized everything for you okay so let's just quickly run through the slide okay when when the time is up we, we will come back again for the last session and which which will be about the 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 pathologies okay so it's, it's 10 o'clock, okay? So give me like 30 minutes more, then we will end, okay? Good. Please, any questions so far? Right. Yes. Yes, Senior Bright. Yes, Angela. Please, um, can you go over the L cards thing? Yeah. Can you go over the L cards? Yeah, okay. So so I said that the, the HDL absorbs, the HDL, okay, it absorbs or it takes cholesterol from the tissues okay then it is sent it to the to the liver okay but you see if as it, it receives the cholesterol from the tissues the cholesterol is just sticking is sticking outside okay and if it's sticking outside it will be lost again rendering the 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 function of the hdl ineffective so after it receives the cholesterol what it must do is that it must take the cholesterol deeper into the um um, how do you call it? Let, let me show you a picture. Uh -huh, good, good. Please, can you see this this slide? Can you see the, the, the picture? I need a response. Can you please see the picture? Yes. yes. Uh -huh, good. So if you, if you look at it, this, this is the, the actual structure of a lipoprotein. Okay. Look look at where the cholesterol yes, is. Yes, you can see good you see the cholesterol is outside you see the cholesterol is outside over here these ones the the dark yellow the dark yellow spots okay they are they are cholesterol these ones okay cholesterol cholesterol okay and then look look at where cholesterol ester is you can see that cholesterol ester is found deeper within the lipoprotein Oh, okay, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh -huh, good. So if it, it, if it receives the cholesterol raw like that, okay, the cholesterol will just be on the surface. If it's on the surface, it can be lost to the, to the tissue as the HDL is moving. So what the HDL is going to do is that it's going to take this cholesterol, okay? Then you, you, see, you see there are phospholipids over here. Uh -huh, this phospholipid, one of them is lecithin. So what's going to do is that it's going to take a fatty acid from the phospholipid and then give it to the cholesterol and convert the cholesterol to cholesterol ester. Once you convert it to cholesterol ester, it will move deeper into the lipoprotein. So in, in that way, we are able to shift all the cholesterol deeper into the HDL so that um, um, we don't lose it to the, to the tissue as the HDL is moving. And I said the enzyme is called the l cat which is lecithin, cholesterol is a transferase okay it means that it means that it is transporting an acyl group from the from the lecithin to the cholesterol and convert it to cholesterol ester the enzyme is l cats and um, please is it clear yes please okay good thank any, you any other questions Any other questions? Uh, Bryce, is there other question? Okay, yes, Ella. Um, please, I didn't really get the apple C2, apple E2. Yes, which part? Like the, the part where you were talking about the HDL giving off apple C2 and then 
Yeah, the Kalmykon sparks. I didn't yeah. really get it. Like so, just that part wait, with which the apposito. Okay, okay. As in, you see where you were like HDL gives off apposito, and then there's some remnants Kalmykon yes. remaining. Okay, so okay. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me take that side again. So I'm saying that. Okay. After you, you produce your HD, uh, uh, sorry, after you produce your chylomicron, okay, we have what is called the nascent chylomicron or the new chylomicron, okay. This chylomicron must receive apo C2 and apo E from HDL. If it, it doesn't receive it, that chylomicron is going to be non functional, okay, it, it's not going to function. Okay, so that's the reason why it, it receives apo C2 and apo E. Now, the function of the apo C2 that it receives, okay, is that it's, it's going to activate a certain enzyme called LPL, which is lipoprotein lipase. Okay, the lipoprotein lipase is, is like fork and knife, okay? Uh, fork and knife. So, it, it uses it to chop off some of the triacylglycerides so that the tissues can use them. Okay. So that's the function of the lipoprotein lipase. It's an, it's, it's an enzyme within the capillaries of the tissues, okay? And what that does is that it breaks down the lipoproteins into, I mean, the triacylglyceride from the chylomicron, okay? So that the tissues can use it. So after this, the, the chylomicron that we are going to get now is going to be smaller because you have removed chunk of the triacylglyceride from it. So it's going to be smaller. Okay, and then that's 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 the remaining chylomicron is what is called the remnant chylomicron. The remnant chylomicron, and this remnant chylomicron has apo E, okay, uh, because it, it didn't use the apo the apo E, so now it has it has the apo E. Then with this apo E, it will be it will be taken back to the liver, and then the liver will absorb it. If it does not have the apple E, the liver will not will not recognize it. Okay, and I also that it, it could also lose the apple E and then become LDL. So LDL can be formed from the the sorry sorry sorry. Okay okay, I, I'm missing the DLDL and then the uh, how do you call it the chylomicron. But but they are all this. What whatever happens to the chylomicron, the same thing happens to the VLDL. Okay, the 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 processes are the same. So what, when you get the, the remnant chylomicron, the remnant chylomicron can be absorbed by the liver, okay? The same process occurs for VLDL. For VLDL, it also receives apo C2 and apo E. Then lipoprotein lipase will come and chop off some of the triacylglycerides from the VLDL. When that happens, the remaining one, or the remnant VLDL is what is called the IDL, which is it? Intermediate density lipoprotein. Okay, this one has to mm. E with it. Okay, so it can be sent back to the to the liver, or it can lose the apo E and form LDL. Okay, please. Is but it clear? Brett, right. it's, it's clear. It's clear, Brett. You yes. said that the nascent chylomicron is is bigger than the remnant chylomicron. Yes. Or is it other way around? Yeah. Yes. The 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 nascent chylom is the nascent chylomicron has a lot of triacylglyceride, so that one is bigger, okay. But it's, it's only big with fat, so the density is lower, so it has low, lower density. Is, is it clear? It has lower density, yeah. And if you, if you remember, because density is mass over volume, so if you have large volume, okay, then you have lower density. And remember that what is even giving its weight is. Is um how do you call it? Is the, uh, the 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 proteins okay? That's the the apo B hundred or the apo B forty. Those are the ones giving the chylomicron weights. Those are the heavier oh. ones. Good. Someone is asking, um, what happens to the B forty eight? When when it's um it's taken back to the liver, the B forty eight. Remember, they are proteins, okay? So they are broken down to amino acids, okay? Good. Let me see, how many minutes do we have to end this session? One.
Um, You know the name of that lecture. Okay, good. So, so let me, let me let me just quickly go to the slide. Now, after this, you realize that if you go to the slide, I've I've talked about everything. Okay, so the 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 the, the function of the apple proteins. Okay, one, we said that they are required for assembly, structure, and function and metabolism of the lipoprotein. Now, as I said, there is difference between the apple proteins and then the lipoproteins. Okay. The apple proteins are the protein parts, which is the B, the B48, B100, okay? And then the, the lipoproteins are the chylomicrons, VLDL, HDL, IDL. Those ones are the lipoproteins. And the apple proteins are the B48, B100, C2E, okay? Those are the apple proteins, okay? And we said that the function of the apple proteins, activation of enzyme. Remember, apple C2 is responsible for activating lipoprotein lipase. Okay, so that's one function. Okay, and they act as ligand for cell